Our phones, they carry a lot of bacteria on them. So wipe down your phone every now and again with a hand sanitizer or two. But also, your glasses hold a lot of germs on them too. So what I like to do is take a little Lysol and actually spray my glasses. Then run them under some hot water for about a minute. So that way you're not wearing around all that dirty gunk and shit on your eyes and on your face. Life hack for your glasses and for your health. Don't see dirty shit. <laughs> Sanitize your phones. Sanitize your glasses. Life hack of the week. Health tip of the week. Shit, just do it. Okay, coming at you with another product review. I bought uh, a hug buddy for my car. So that way, you know, I'm not going to be operating it while I'm driving, obviously. But, you know, when I come to a stop, I won't have to look over, you know, at the passenger side. But, you know, you can, you know what I'm saying? So already off the top, I don't like it. And here's why I don't like it. Okay. This is the hug buddy. Let's see. It's in right now. Right here. Okay. This is the hug buddy. Now, do like this, and it's fugazi. Just like that. Okay. Now it snaps on, but bam, it just pops off. Now, I feel like that can be adjusted with a little bit of super glue. But here's the other problem that I ran into. The vent, it won't, it doesn't, it won't slide in the vent and it'll pull the vent down. And over time that can, you know, mess up my air vent. So this is a $10. So this is a $10 product. I do recommend getting a, a, a device mount for your car. So that way you're not looking, you know, at your phone while you're fucking driving, you know, you come to a stop at a red light. Fuck those people. Even if it does turn green, don't die. Just, you know, sit there and do what you gotta do. But for the most part, I don't think this product is best suited for me. So, right on. So I'm gonna return this. Cool. Okay, it's coming down. So. I like figuring stuff out. Every now and again, I go to the cheat sheets, AKA like Urban Dictionary. But you know, I, like, I enjoy looking up new words and you know, you know how you hear something when you're younger and then you hear it when you're older, you're like, oh my God, that's what they were talking about. Like there's this one singer that says, she's been out for a while. She says, I want a rim job. Now, at, you know, 10 years old, if you hear that song, you're not supposed to know what that is. But as you get older, figure out what a rim jab is. So, but what I'm getting at is, is I didn't hear that song at 10 years old, but what I'm getting at is, is Richard Pryor made a joke that I still haven't figured out. He said, I, he said, people want to know how I caught fire. People thought I caught fire free basin. He said, I caught fire quick trying to quit freebasing. And then he said, I like to have a little cookies before I go to bedtime. That's what he said, or cookies and milk. And he said, I took the cookie, dropped it in the milk, and the shit exploded. Now, I, I, you know, I know a lot of drug references, but this one I do not know. Here's what I think. He said, I quit freebasing. So, which means freebase is crack. So he said, I caught fire trying to quit crack. So he said, I had cookies. He said, he said, I had cookies and milk. He said it was that some of that low fat milk. And what is low fat milk? He said something about low fat milk. And then he said, I dropped the cookie in the milk and the shit exploded. What's the cookie? What is the cookie? And what's the milk? Is the milk the baking soda? And is the cookie cocaine? 
So he dropped the cocaine, the cookie, the low-fat. What is low-fat cookie? I mean, low-fat milk. I'm sorry. Low-fat milk. What's the So is it good Coke or bad Coke? It's that some of that low-fat milk. Well, if, a milk, if milk has lots of fat in it, then it's not good for you. So low-fat milk means... What does low-fat milk mean for Coke? And he said he dropped the cookie in the milk and the shit exploded. So the baking soda in the water. So maybe he did it wrong. So maybe he just dropped the Coke into the glass and it exploded because it was so good. Or maybe the baking soda was cooking and he dropped the Coke in there and it exploded because it was so pure. And then, bam, cookie in the milk. That's my, that's what I think. That's what I think. I don't know. I haven't looked it up yet, but that's what I think. He dropped the low fat milk, low fat Coke. What is low fat? What was low fat Coke? I need to ask a Coke dealer. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to go back and go, oh, I asked him. Yeah, I'm not even going to know. But anyway, I can go ask a Coke dealer. But anyway, yeah, it's my thought of the night. It's supposed to be up in a few hours, but I'm hungry. <clears throat> so I got some to my list. I will give them to my people. I will give them to my uncle, but he go, nigga, you owe me rent. What the fuck am I doing with some tamales? <laughs> But here's my other thought. You ever have somebody come up to you with something that they want you to watch or look at? And, uh... They go, hey man, you should watch this. And, uh, you know, you have two eyes and one mouth, two ears. So... Okay, what I was getting at is, you ever have somebody ask you to watch something or listen to something and that they think is really cool and, and that they, they're interested in? And, you know, you go, all right, cool, I'll, I'll listen to it or watch it. And as soon as they put it on, within five seconds, they're talking through the whole thing, telling you about the parts. They'd be like, listen to this, listen to this right here. He's talking about how such and such and such and such, such. You'd be like, yeah. And then they'd be like, all right, now watch this, watch this. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's about to jump up and down. Or she's about to jump up and down. And then, you know, some, 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 some. And then they go, now watch this. Now she's about to drive the car. And then, you know, they're talking the whole clip. And then they go, did you like it? <laughs> I know, I, I mean, that's pretty relatable. I remember one time I was in this place, I'm not going to tell you where, but let's just say a certain movie was played and somebody had seen the movie and this person talked through the whole fucking movie about what they were saying on the fucking screen. Everything that they said on the screen he said to us and I was like you know so I just got up and walked off because I didn't want to watch the movie anymore but <laughs> before I walked off I said something to the person to him whatever I said something to him and what's the call he said Man, wait, I'm talking right now. <laughs> During the movie about what's on the screen to us. 
Yeah, I just got up and walked off. But I eventually saw the movie somewhere else, though. <laughs> but yeah, that person wants you to watch or listen to something. And well, I remember this other instance where I was at this uh, chick's house. And she was telling me to listen to this song. Now, I love music. <clears throat> I have not made my way to too many country songs right now. Except I do like Bob Dylan. So, you know. <clears throat> but she was telling me to listen to this song. But as the song was playing, she kept saying, listen to this song. Just listen to this song. And she was saying it so fucking loud. I was like, I'm motherfucking trying to. <laughs> I didn't say that, though. But I was thinking it. Yeah, you know, normally I say stuff like that, but not... not Cool stuff was about to happen after that, so I just kept quiet. <laughs> Another blackout thought. I gotta be at work in like two hours. <clears throat> Whoa, we'll hear my view. Universe here. We'll hear my echo. My voice will have to go across the universe. Anyway, you know, I can do that. But, this is for the job, especially for the entry level people. You know, when it's, I figured out a way to just get by by effectively doing nothing. What you need to do is always have something in your hand. Always, if you're a waiter, always have maybe a tray in your hand, a cup, you know, a utensil. You know, if you're a bus boy, always have a bus tub in your hand or a broom. Always. Or a rag. You know, looking around ready. When, if this, is a, if this is especially effective when it's slow. Now, when it actually starts picking up and shit, you might actually have to start doing stuff. But, I thought, or always clean something. Just walk over and just wipe it down. <laughs> and, uh, but, always, but always hold the bus tub if you're a bus boy. Always hold something in your hand. If you're in the office, let's say you work at a desk job. And always have a clipboard in your hand. You know, always have a clipboard and a pen and always look down and talk to yourself about numbers. So that way when people walk by, you know, they ask you to do something, go, oh, I'm in the middle of about to do, you know, you know, but then you say, oh, I'm in the middle of about to do something, you know, and then they go, oh, can you do it when you finish? And then, if you don't do it, then you say you forgot. Also, how to effectively skip out on work without actually getting fired. Always show up on time. Always do what you're supposed to do. Do this for like three to four months. And skip out. Nobody ever says it. Anything. Or always do what you're supposed to do, and when somebody asks you to do something after like three or four months, just don't do it. You always do it. You know? <laughs> don't do it. You don't say anything. When they come back and say, "Did you forget?" But you don't get in trouble because you always do what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? I've had to effectively skip out on work. But for the most part, when it's business, you know, yeah, you have to pick up the pace because you can't just walk around. I mean, you can walk around with, you know, something, but eventually, sometimes you're like, man, you just walking around with that. 
and just throw them in the dishwasher <laughs> even if they're clean and nobody will want to just do it and then wash them off again and they go, oh these are a little dirty it could be one dish and as long as it looks like you've done something nobody wants to do it Even if you pull up, even if you always know you're supposed to be able to pull up stuff on like one time. Nobody says anything. But here's the thing. Is it socially acceptable? How tall is it? What, what's the tolerance level for cell phones? I know certain jobs you cannot have your cell phone. Like if you work at a bank or people who deal with people's personal information, you cannot have a cell phone. But, you know. But for all of the jobs, certain jobs, you know, you're not really supposed to have them. But people definitely take personal calls. You know, I've you know, I've even seen the higher ups pull out their phone. I'm pretty sure they're making business calls from their cell phones. I'm pretty sure. And I'm not saying this to tell on anybody. I'm saying how how tolerant really is having a cell phone at the workplace. You know, I've seen higher ups pull out their cell phones and, you know, start texting. And this is multiple jobs, you know? Or, and, you know, I've seen the lower level employees pull out their cell phones and, you know, take a phone call and start texting in front of, you know, the customer. You know? So, I mean, as long as I guess you're not quiet all the time, or you just whip it out, bam, 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 bam. nobody really says anything. Like I say, you're not supposed to do it, but everybody has one, and cell phone, and looking at a screen is an addiction that we all have to suffer from, for the most part, or one that's constantly be entertained, or... Granted, we have to take a personal, personal call, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But for the most part, I mean, I see it all the time. I've been the point of, you know, I've been, you know, just put the cell phone out. I text and the manager will walk by. He doesn't do anything. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. Well, that's the question I'm raising. And when the man who pulls out their cell phone and off the low level employees just walk by, you know. <laughs> but we all do it. So we always put something in their hand. You know. Uh, that, that suits your job title, you know, don't. Work at a desk job and have a bus touch, you know what I'm saying? Don't be a bus boy with pen and paper. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. But whatever your job title will be, you know, you can't be a fireman or firewoman. Take putting up a fire. <laughs> We start running to the water, 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 uh, what's that, uh, hi, fire hydrant, and we stop the tiny shoe. <laughs> and you just quick text. 
and then you run to the uh and then you run to the fire truck and back it up some more. You know, I'm just trying to make it up. Making it kind of super parallel. <laughs> I'm trying to make the fire truck super parallel to the fire hydrant. And he's like, dude, or one. You know, we just asked you to turn the fire hydrant on. It's been 10 minutes. Alright, well, I'll go do it. <laughs> and then that person runs to the roof and tries to just <laughs> to, uh, loosen, I mean, loosen the slack in the rope. Or, you know what I'm saying? You know how the rope bends and, <clears throat> I mean, the hose. I say rope, the hose. Bend and it doesn't circulate properly, it actually cuts off the circulation out of the water. I press the and it pushes that. This is why I heard me, you know, shit like that. <laughs> and then you can catch the beer. <laughs> but you can't do that in a job like that. So the lights went out on, at our job, somebody hit the electricity, hit a, hit a pole, and uh, so now we chilling. Guess that's a sign. I would go see the fight tonight, but I don't think I should do the drive because of issues. So, yeah. But, you know, the mom, I think I've stated this before, you know, the mom and pop shops that I've worked at, and you know, you know most restaurants, you know, fast food restaurants that I've worked at, you know, most uh, stores that I've worked at, it was all the way up until I got about, <clears throat> say, 23, that I met a person, he was a manager, he was the assistant manager, but the actual manager, he would give breaks, but he was the assistant manager. And he wouldn't give breaks. He would say, yeah, I don't believe in breaks. You can't get a break. He would say that. He would say that. Which legally, you know, your personal feelings about how you feel about you know, what you believe in when it comes to law don't really apply. If you're legally allowed to get a break, you get a break. Mm-hmm. Now, it's, you know, I guess this is first world problems, but shit. It's an issue I'm going to talk about. Or something I'll bring up. But here's the thing. What I'm getting at is this. Like restaurants that I've worked at, like I'm talking about like busy restaurants, like the ones that are open like 24 hours or, you know, super busy restaurants. I don't know. I've worked in like two, let's see, three, three restaurants, three restaurants I've worked in where, you know, you take people's order and serve and they don't do breaks. You know, well, maybe, yeah, they didn't do breaks the first one I worked at, and then the second one, you know, they didn't do breaks, they tried to, and then the third one, and oh yeah, and then I transferred to another location, and they didn't do breaks. They didn't do breaks, and now I got this other job, and this other job, I have two jobs, but uh, the mom and pop shop, they do breaks, but the other one, um, they don't do breaks. And here's the thing, we're slowly conforming to that. Like, legally, it says you're supposed to get a break after eight hours, right? But, shit, you sign up to work, and you don't get a break, and you know this next motherfucker ain't getting no break, and you know this next motherfucker ain't getting no break. Ain't nobody getting breaks. Even though know you're supposed to. So, the lights went out on, at our job, somebody hit the electricity. Hit a, hit a pole and uh, so now we chilling guess that's a sign I would go see the fight tonight but I don't think I should do the drive because of issues so yeah but you know the mom I think I've stated this before you know the mom and pop shops that I've worked at and you know most restaurants you know, fast food restaurants that I worked at, you know, 
most uh, stores that I've worked at. It was all the way up until I got about, let's say, 23, that I met a person. He was a manager. He was the assistant manager, but the actual manager, he would give breaks. But he was the assistant manager, and he wouldn't give breaks. He would say, yeah, I don't believe in breaks. You can't get a break. He would say that. He would say that. Which legally, you know, your personal feelings about how you feel about you know, what you believe in when it comes to law don't really apply. If you're legally allowed to get a break, you get a break. Now, it's, you know, I guess it's a first world problem, but shit, it's an issue I'm gonna talk about or something I'll bring up. But here's the thing: what I'm getting at is, is like restaurants that I've worked at. Like I'm talking about like busy restaurants. Ones that are open like 24 hours or, you know, super busy restaurants. I don't know. I've worked in like two, let's see, three, three restaurants, three restaurants I've worked in where, you know, you take people's order and serve and they don't do breaks, you know. Well, maybe, yeah, they didn't do breaks the first one I worked at and then the second one, you know. They didn't do breaks, they tried to. And then the third one. And oh yeah, and then I transferred to another location. And they didn't do breaks. They didn't do breaks. And now I got this other job. And this other job. I have two jobs. But uh, the mom and pop shop, they do breaks. But the other one, um, they don't do breaks. And here's the thing, we're slowly conforming to that. Like legally it says you're supposed to get a break. After eight hours, right? But shit, you sign up to work and you don't get no break, and you know this next motherfucker ain't getting no break, you know this next motherfucker ain't getting no break. Ain't nobody getting breaks. Even though know you're supposed to. So, with the power being out like around the whole block, I keep thinking about all the food I would eat. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to help it not go bad. <laughs> or nobody can find you. <laughs> and then when the power, when the manager finds you, you got a mouth full of like cake. Or <laughs> burgers. It's like. Oh yeah, man, I'm trying to eat. Man, I miss going to the stand up comedy club. But I got a few thoughts. Okay, so I saw Mile 22 today, and uh, it's actually, it's, it's alright, it's alright movie, there are no lights in this room, it's alright, I gave it about a 6, but uh, here's my theory, I think I've done one movie theory for about Message to the King taking place before he come, uh, taking place before he, uh, becomes king of Wakanda. <clears throat> but he never mentions his sister because that he disowned her. So he has a sister that he never talks about, but he's king of Wakanda. And it takes place right before his father's assassination. Now, here's two more movie theaters that I'm throwing out. Movie theories. Theories I'm throwing out. Okay, I think Jarhead. Uh, Jay Gyllenhaal's character. Uh, takes place before he become Before he becomes a cop. So... He's a Marine, and then after that, he retires from the Marines and then becomes a cop in California because he even mentions it. He said in the car, he said, what did you do before you became a cop? He said, Marines. Boom. Right there. It takes place uh, after he's in the Marines. Um, yeah. So... No, it takes place before, yeah, in Jarhead takes place bef before End of the Watch. And then at the end, of course, dot, dot, dot. Now, my other movie theory is, is 
Mark Wahlberg uh, in Mile 22 was a cop in the de- movie The Departed because he mentions in the interview about being a cop. So maybe he had to change his identity or whatever, but he becomes a, a different agent because in the movie they said it's illegal to record them because they're ghosts. You don't know anything about them. So they change their names. Bam! Movie theory right there. I think so. Uh, I'm going to write that now. Also, here's here's something else. I think I think that uh, certain information is being tracked, like grouped together. Because I was walking down the street and I noticed somebody had the sim- same information that I did, and it was so similar. I was like, they had to have gone to the same place to get this information, or we're being grouped by the same information like it, it's not it wasn't like the exact same but the same three letters were the same if you get what i'm talking about the same three letters and i was like and and the person lived down the street that's the thing so he had to have gone to the same place or i don't know but it seems so strange so i'm gonna look out for that because damn, it, it was, it was, or maybe that's just, you know, a sequence of numbers, but, you know, I mean, sequence, yeah, I'm just saying, but I just, I, I don't know. It, it just seemed very strange. So I'm going to look out for that. And the person lived down the street for me too. I'm going to look for more of those. But yeah, I'm going to Reddit that. That's my movie theater, and that's my uh, other theory. You know, yeah, I'm not the best roaster. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to let you sit there and fire me up. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say something back. <laughs> I'm aiming. I'm <laughs> a hail mary of insults of, of some kind of creativity of the mind will be coming at you. I'm not, you know, because <laughs> I've seen people say horrible shit, but the other person didn't say anything. Like the dude sat there and said, but he was like, "Doo doo head, motherfucker." But it, the insults came so rapidly. He was like, "Doo doo head, motherfucker," gap tooth. Dumbass, uh, you look like a ninja turtle. He said he was, you know, he he was just hurling insults. But the the other dude just sat there, and then he walked off. And uh, I was like, dude, you know, they weren't the best insults, but you had nothing to say. He he won. He won. Everybody was like, yeah, you know, they weren't the best. You know, I'm not gonna sit there and let you fire me up. But uh. One time, I was at work, and this dude uh, spoke to this woman, and uh, the woman was a manager, and uh, she was like, yeah, I was going to go over there and handle that, and, uh, but she was a really small lady, she's, you know, she's not the best looking lady, but she's cool, and, uh, you know, (laughs) To this day, okay, the dude uh, was across the counter, and he was like, yeah, you go over there and handle handle that little naked mole rat. And, uh, (laughs) you know, there was was another situation at work where this short manager also uh, got in the way of this bigger dude, stopping him from uh, fighting one of the employees. And uh, she was like, and she's a really small lady. She's like five feet, maybe like four eleven, five feet one. She's really small. And uh, 
you know, this took place on like Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. And uh, she was like, yeah, I was all up in his face. And she kept bragging about it. She said, yeah, I was all up in his face. And uh, I was ready. And, and uh, <laughs> she kept talking about it. And uh, she came back to where we were all sitting. She was like, uh, man, and if he would have hit me, um, I got people here that would have helped me out. I said, I wouldn't. I really said that. I said, I wouldn't. She said, so? I was like, so anyway, that's what I'm getting at. Uh, but here's the thing. When he said that, to and going back to the uh, original story, the dude... He was like, yeah, you go over there, little naked mole rat. <laughs> or something like that. He called her a naked mole rat. Dude, that's the most offensive thing. Because to this day, I was like, what the fuck? He just called her a naked mole rat. Like, that, a naked mole rat. Because it was kind of true. But it was almost like, being, uh, it was like a caricature of her. You know? Popped out in my head of uh, you know, how character caricatures are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, making more rat. Oh my goodness! I, like I kind of froze up, and I was like, like she laughed it off, but to, in my head, I was like, I was like, man, you called her a naked mole rat. A naked mole rat. Like, I don't think he even meant it, like, as a, as a roast. I think he was, you know, you know just joking around. But damn. <laughs> That's the thing. I was like, oh, no. To this day, I think about that. Like, he called her a naked mole rat. He said, little Nicky Mole Rat. Oh my goodness. He called a woman a naked mole rat. He called that woman a naked mole rat. I, he wasn't trying to be like mean or anything, but the fact that he described her as a naked mole rat. Uh, so, I was sitting here thinking, you know, certain jobs, if you don't ask, they're going to pay you the bare minimum. You know what I'm saying? And certain jobs pay you the bare minimum because they don't really know you. You know what I'm saying? Now, you have a resume. They know a little something about you before you walk in the door. Even when you put on an application, I still get resumes. You don't have to. I just feel like it speeds up the service of the norm. Because here's the thing before I go back. Let me, yeah. Here's the thing. I, uh, brought a resume to a job. It was a, it's a dead end job. But here's the thing. I'm not bragging. I'm not trying to say do this. But I went to one job interview and got a job. And then I was contemplating not going to the other job. But I was like, man, fuck all that. So I just went. I went. I don't know why I doubted to go to the other job for the second interview, settling. But I went and uh, I was late. And I was like, I was gonna apologize. But I was like, man, I walked in and there was two people before me. There was two people before me. And I was like, oh, okay. A group interview, I never get these. I was contemplating leaving because I don't get group interviews. I mean, every time I've been in a group interview, I've never gotten it. So, you know, I don't know, but it was only two people and I was thinking maybe like more people were coming, but we stood there and 
I was like, man, I'm going to go sit down. He said, I asked, because I asked the dude, I asked the dude, I said, how long have you been waiting here? And uh, he was like, 45 minutes. <laughs> he said, last time I waited like two hours or something like that. He said, last time I waited like an hour or so. I forgot. It was a long time. I was like, man, I sat down the last time. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to go sit down now. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm gonna go sit down now. I started walking toward the chair. He said, Nah, man, they're trying to weed us out. And I was like, All right, he's probably right. They're probably trying to weed us out. And uh, I probably just, you know, you know, overreacted. My bad. They're right. I forgot. So. Here's the thing. He starts talking, and I was like, well, I'm here to be such and such. And he was like, yeah, I'm here to be such and such. The other dude's like, well, I got to connect. The one that stopped me from walking to the chair, he was like, yeah, I got to connect. I'm going to be such and such. And uh, I was like, oh, that's what's up. Dang, I just, but then I started getting paranoid. And I was like, man, I'm telling him. Sir? So, you notice how ever since I made that post on Instagram about buying Tesla stocks because Elon Musk smoked weed on the Joe Rogan show? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. So, here's the thing. Ever since Elon Musk smoked weed on the Joe Rogan podcast, and I made that post about buying Tesla stocks. Shit hasn't been going well for that dude. You know, shit hasn't been going well at all for him after that. I mean, I'm just saying, like, I'm not saying the weed was the direct cause of that. But, I mean, ever since he took that one fucking puff, there's been controversy, people quitting. And he's had to resign as CEO. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is setting up tents for migrants trying to come this way during election time. There was also a hurricane that wiped an island off the map. In Hawaii, that's that's pretty. I'm not saying that's, you know, I'm not saying that's cool. But like, imagine like witnessing such a catastrophic, catastrophic, like anomaly in your day. You'd be like, dude or woman, <laughs> yo, you tell people. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure you record that if you actually saw it. I mean, uh, I mean, I live stream. Uh, fucking hurricane wiping a city off the map. Hopefully I'm not that city, but you know, lost footage, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> lost found footage. Final moments of a, you know. But I'm not saying that that's cool or anything, but just saying. Hopefully nobody got hurt. But from what I understand, it was mostly uh, it was just like sea turtles and stuff like that. You know, anyway, I've learned another lesson about cars. I would have put a DIY up, but oh, here's what I really wanted to tell you. Okay, so. I remember when I was like 18 years old, that's how old I was. I was 18. And this dude, I'm not gonna give too many details, but he put a Facebook post up because he was in college at the time. He was at a university. I don't know where the fuck he was, but he was at a university. And all of a sudden, I was scrolling through the posts. And all of a sudden, he's going, oh, my goodness. And then I remember him putting 
yeah, I was in the room with two girls and he said, I turned around and turned back around and both these girls were naked. I was like, what the fuck? And that's kind of what he was paraphrasing. And I said, did you smash? And he was like, no, I told him to get out. And then the two girls commented, I think, I think, I think the two girls commented and said, it's okay, such and such. We were just trying to, I don't remember. I think they commented, but another woman's mom commented on it and said, I don't remember. But in my head, I was like, what the fuck? Please tell me that is not a true story. But I, I, I don't, I don't know. I really couldn't believe it. But yeah, I really think that the, uh, man, I mean, that was years ago, but I thought about that. I mean, at 18, but here's the thing, you do that now, now nah, man, I might, I can understand why, but man, I didn't know him. I didn't know him, and I ain't had no condoms, so, you know. Fuck all that. I, cause I've, I've even heard somebody one time, you know, I don't smash the time unless they've been tested. So, with that being stated, with that being stated, uh, I was talking to this one cat, and he was like, yeah, this girl, she gave me this uh, paraphernalia. And uh, he was like, I think she wanted to smash. I said, did you fuck? He's like, nah, I ain't had no condoms. I said, fucking respect, nigga. Oh, I said, respect, for real. And then we moved on. <laughs> I mean, this day and age, you don't know. So, but there was a reason why I told that story. And it wasn't because of that type of scare where you don't know the girl. Because I think he knew them. <laughs> oh, man. I don't think that nigga's had a stitch of pussy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to talk about some real shit before I have to go do my duties. So... Y'all heard John real loud. Yeah, I was getting a stern talking to you about life. Now, here's the deal. I had financial problems and situations that immediately, immediately needed to be taken care of. And I took care of them, but at the expense of someone else. But it wasn't the fact that I was trying to take advantage of this person. It was the fact that we both knew what was up. So, and the, that person was like, you know, you need to start doing this, this, and this. He was giving me life advice. And I was trying to take it all in, you know. But the first thing, and you know, in my other post when I was talking about, um, a YouTube post when I was talking about getting the car, you know, otherwise that was, that was the car situation. You know what I'm saying? That 30 minute post, that was the car situation. I had to get the car. I had to get the issues with the car situated first because if not, worse things would have happened. And that was immediate. Oh snap, they're putting up the roof. Oh snap. Yeah, I was trying to get a job over there. I'm trying to make some life money, some career money, some skill knowledge money. You know what I'm saying? Not dead in money that's what it's about because if you collectively pick up shit as you go even little pieces i think it's been said before learn a little bit of everything instead of learning everything about one thing isn't that how it goes yeah that's what i, I mean i ain't you know i got a little school knowledge fucked up there still trying to i mean now i know what i want to do in life but anyway what i'm getting at is is you know Learn a couple things about the car that I can apply. If uh, I ever am in a down situation, I'd be like, man, I could change your oil. You know what I'm saying? Give me $25. Bam. That's uh, 
That's a some meal right there. And then you change two oils, that's 50 bucks. Bam! You change three, you done paid. Well, I mean, depends on what kind of phone you have. Technically, you shouldn't have a $60 bill. With only $25. Well, that's not bad. Hold on. Let me retract it. Well, you can have a $60 phone bill. I mean, if you don't have nothing, it's a bill. It's due. But, if you have 50 bucks and you have a $50 phone bill, what do you do? I let my shit get cut off. And then, I don't know. I just let it get cut off. I mean, I have my ways of communicating. It's nothing like, it's not like the next motherfucker doesn't have a phone. All you have to do is don't be lazy and memorize phone numbers or write them down and then call a motherfucker. It's old school. You know what I'm saying? It's not that hard. And then if you apply to a job, shit, I don't know. Go up there. Go up there. I mean, if you're determined, you go up there again. And depends on what kind of job, too. You know, if it's a career, you go up there again and again. If it's a dead end job, you go up there once or twice and go to the next dead end job. There's always dead end jobs for the most part, depending on what you got going. But for the, okay, now back to what I was talking about. Now, I had to take care of that issue with the car. So I thought that was understood because that had been so prolonged that, you know, it was immediate. But the, the, person, the other person was like, man, you should have just spoke to me about that. I would have understood. And maybe so. But I thought I was adulting too. You know what I'm saying? I thought I was adulting too, you know. But maybe that was a move that I missed. I mean, it's clearly a move that I missed because he was very upset. And I was like, you know, I understand where you're coming from, but I thought what I had, I mean, and on top of that, you know, I'm not throwing it in nobody's face or, you know, trying to point, oh, you say this. But, you know, from my perspective, you know, he tells me the money I pay ain't shit. He'd be like, man, that little money ain't shit. I don't need that money. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I guess it's maybe that I didn't speak to him personally about what I had going or what I was going to do with the money that I made. And I know, you know what I'm saying? Because we have an agreement, you know, but I don't feel like I violated agreement. I just thought if I didn't get that issue with the car fix, the next time I roll down the street, there's going to be a bigger issue. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I thought. I wasn't trying to hold nobody. I mean, I understand when he says uh, I, can't, I don't contribute that much. But I try. Just I get lazy. But that's really what I thought was supposed to be taken care of. And now he's telling me such and such and such and such and such and such. And I was like, oh, man. All right. I see your perspective. And I understand it. Definitely understand it. But I wasn't trying to get over on you, man. Definitely not that. Definitely not that. But I thought I was adulting. You know what I'm saying? And I get told something totally different. I get told something totally different. And, you know, I made a, that video. I made this clip. I think I accidentally deleted it. But I, re I put some of it on the internet about the job situation. And he was like, well, you stuck in this little mindset right here. And I was like, yo, I tried what you told me first. I ended up landing here because of what I tried with you. You know? You know what I'm saying? I've, I've clearly made a video of me going up to the place and asking, is this the place, you know, that you come for, the, for to apply to jobs? You know what I'm saying? And you just walk in and get a job. And you don't do that. And he clearly told me that. But here I was following his advice to get the jobs. And they didn't work out. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I got a bunch of rejection emails from the jobs that he gave me. You know what I'm saying? So 
when when I'm looking for a job and I'm not getting the job, you know, I know what's true, you know. I know it's true. I know it's true. And he has his house, you know, so it's his universe. But I know it's true. So what I'm getting at is, is you know, if a person don't have a job, he expects a person to get a job you know, right then and there. You know, I, I walked into a job. I know I said what job did he walk in to and start getting paid like 14, 15 bucks an hour. But I have walked into a job. I keep forgetting. I walked into a job, and they didn't ask me my name for like three days. I think I made a video about that. They didn't ask me my name for three days because uh, such and 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 such. And I filled out an application like two days later, like on like the second or third day. I don't remember. And then on the third day, I discussed my pay. But it wasn't no $12 an hour. It was like fresh out the joint money. And the reason why I lost that one was because I had that beard. And he said something about it, and I thought he was kidding. I was like, well, you're just mad because my beard makes me look good, and you're ugly. Because you look like a uh, Mr. Potato Head. I was going to start the roast fest, but, you know. So he told me, hey, don't come to work the next day. And I was like, oh, well, I know what that means. So I just left. I thought he was kidding. You know? I mean, I knew he, you know, he would say something about the beard, but I was wearing a beard guard. He'd be like, yeah, you need to shave. Uh, he'd be like, yeah, you look like James Harden. You know what I'm saying? You know? So, I mean, I don't really want to look like James Harden. Because I want to look like me. And I think my beard is better. He just has more money. And can has really good athletic skills. But anyway. That doesn't make his beard better. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so. I thought I got fired. And then so I, you know. Then we came to that. And he was like, well. You know, I was getting, you know, looked at funny for applying to the jobs that he would tell me to apply to. And he has his perspective and everybody else has their perspective and they're more than welcome to, if this video ever gets out, speak their opinions. I'm not, this could, you know, for anybody watching this, this could be like, oh, this is just his one-sided opinion. Or, you know what I'm saying? They're more than welcome to. But if my emails ever get hacked, hopefully they don't. <sighs> Yeah, find the last 10 years of emails about how, you know, what's it called? How I was getting rejected from all these jobs. So, that was on the list that he told me to go to. You know what I'm saying? So, and then he goes, well, you got 30 days to move out. But, and he's going, you're not looking. That's when I made that video about me going up to the job. And then I even called up there in front of him. And I was like, you don't just walk in to get a job. And they start paying you 14 bucks an hour. You know what I'm saying? So I go to these interviews that I applied to. I think one of them was on the list, though. But, you know, I go to, but one of them wasn't. I go to these jobs that I applied to and I strictly said to one of the guys in the interview, I said, well, you have, I I said, I have what you need. I said, you have what I need. I have what you need. I meant labor. You know what I'm saying? And I got the job. And then I, you know, I went to another job the same day and got that job. But he tells me, oh, you stuck in this little mindset about the, you know, well, at the time I had the issues with the car. So, why would I be, you know, traveling 20, 20 plus miles in areas I don't know and stuff can happen? And I thought that was understood too. So, you know, I take the first two jobs that offer me a spot. Why would I turn down a job when I need money and I want money, you know? 
You know what I'm saying? Why would I turn down when I follow three people's advice and they were all wrong? Well, okay. Semi wrong. Because like I said, one of the jobs I think was on there. Hold on. Yeah, but here's the deal. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. Okay, well, then I have to take that back, but I'm not unediting this. Yeah, one of the jobs was on there, but one of the other jobs wasn't. But it wasn't like, but he was, you know, when I was telling him how much I was getting paid, he was like, oh, man, he's stuck in these little jobs and stuff. I said, I need to come up. I need to save. So that way I can fix issues and, you know, move on. I can't go all the way, you know, out in the woodwards with these issues. This is going to rack up more issues. You know this. You know what I'm saying? And he was mad. He was mad. Yesterday he was mad, which rightfully so. But. And then I get looked at as, oh, just being the stoner. But nobody wants to admit that I took three people's advice about walking up. That's what, that's where he's really wrong at. That's where he's really wrong at. Because the jobs that he did give me, I got one. But I applied to from everything from like Delta Airlines to Frito-Lay to Chili's. You know, I applied to a lot of places. And I may have not applied to everything, but, you know. What I'm getting at is I applied. So, with that being stated, ended up landing in these positions right here. And I just started coming up. I ain't got it like that, you know. Maybe I got a bad weed problem, but here's the thing. I used to have a worst weed problem back when I was before the move. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to have a worst weed problem. Like, I would be spending lots of fucking money on weed every couple of days and now i smoke five dollar sacks and ten dollar sacks and ten dollars gets you dot 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 but i'm just saying like i've come a long i mean a long way from the horrible weed habit that i used to have you know what i'm saying like it used to be bad like half ounces you know i think weed is my biggest downfall but shit i mean everything else Shit, I don't really want to fuck, cause it's too fucking scared now. There's shit going around. Can't trust people. I'm cool. I've been with. I'm not the biggest player, but and I haven't fucked the finest of the finest. But I've been with my fair share of women, so I'm cool with chilling. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. But my stories of sex are awesome, though. Right on. Like real fucking shit. I got some real cool sex stories. So, you know. But I don't want, nah, that's not the epitome of me. I'm just, you know. I got confronted. I think I even put it, I don't remember. This dude confronted me because I didn't pick up the phone, take him to jobs. But I tried to offer him a job. I was like, you come up here. I mean, they may not pay much, but you can come up here with me and we can go work together. All you gotta do is reply, just ask for such and such. You know what I'm saying? And he's still looking for a job. I told two people. I'm not, you know, I'll tell you about it. Even if I don't take you up there, nigga, if you want, if you want, you know, such, 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 such money, then, you know, then you need to go up there and put a, put in an application. You may get the job the same day, but you had to put in an application first. You know what I'm saying? You had to put in an application first. And you may get the job the same day. Some jobs be like, all right, come back such and such day. Just so they can set up an interview, because they're busy. You know, the manager can't sit down right away and have an interview with you. You know? So. You know, what I'm getting at is, is I and then he gonna confront me and start talking shit, and it takes me, you know, it takes me, it takes me a minute to get riled up. Don't just don't get that close, you know. 
trying to threaten me. You know, don't don't get close talking like, oh, I'll put your hands up and stuff. I'll back up, but you keep coming forward. You know, I'll take that as a sign of a threat. And, you know. But otherwise, you know, you can stand there and talk shit all the time. Just, you know. Especially if you have me boxed in. You know, I think anybody in their right mind, you know, would be like, hey, man, back up. Please. Or, hey, woman, back up. Please. Don't let nobody hit on you, man. Regardless of that. Real talk. Now, you can wait for the first punch. But for the most part, I, you know, I don't throw it. But for the most part, you know, it's be, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Don't let nobody beat up on you. For real. Even if shit, you're wrong, don't let nobody beat up on you. There's plenty of people that are wrong that are kings. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of people that are right that are dead. So. Or have become kings. So. You know, and vice versa. But I'm just saying. Don't let nobody beat up on you. But for the most part, you know. It takes a lot for me to get riled up. You know, I keep that in. Last thing you want to do is be in a place because of something somebody said, you know, and you're 50 feet away. Fucking walk away. Even if they're running at you, walk away. Now, if they're a sprinter and they can close the distance on you pretty quickly, or that person can close the distance on you quick pretty quickly, then, you know, hopefully it's not a he say, she say situation. Don't just stand there and let somebody wail on you. The fuck? Anyway, you can come up to me talking shit about you and this, that, and the other, and I was like, man, I just rolled the window up on him, nigga. Real talk. I just rolled the window up on him. You know? So, yeah, I think this is an ending thought to this video. Mixtape Underground, Renegade, I am, mixtapes, mixtape of thoughts, Renegade, I am, productions, producer of thoughts, news, local. Trying to get this podcast life together, real talk, but shit. I wanted to take a dive at it and just start doing it, but I ain't trying to, I need, you know, I owe people money. So it's either dreams, you know, dreams first, but you can't do that when it comes across people. So yeah, I might have to just wait. Hopefully I get it done soon. So coming up slowly, but fuck. Man. But I did apply to new jobs. So. Yeah. And the issues that I've, you know, had arise. Shit, it just caused me to like not want to talk no more as much. You know? And then I've learned I'm pretty hard to live with, so shit, I gotta live with that realization. I I don't try to be. You know, I get told, well you do you try, you just be like stoned out your motherfucking mind. <laughs> So that's why I don't really pay too much attention <laughs> to it. It's like, you don't try to leave it. That's a test, but, yeah. But I've picked up skills around here, though. Like I said, that I'm pretty proud to learn. 
that I can take with me, like plumbing. I can't put no underground plumbing in. That's what I was talking to somebody about earlier. I can't put no underground plumbing in, but I can, uh, it's, it's dripping. I can, I can place the top part. Quick YouTube video, bam. That's how me and Deuce Deuce did it. And then I was told I was liability, which yeah, that was semi crazy. But well, here's the thing. In one of those situations, someone was like, well, you notice how they don't bring such and such and such and such around? And, uh, you know, here's the thing. I used to light up in one of the old houses, and it caused somebody not to come around. But here's the thing. Those people didn't care about how I lived to a certain degree either. You know what I'm saying? Now the realization is there, you know, for that situation. I was like, you know, ever since I started doing that, those people didn't hear that those people didn't really come around anymore and i was like you know you know because some people really can't take hot being high like now we make me fucking paranoid i don't know why i smoke it but you know i guess it just relieves all you know, even the weak shit but anyway i'm not getting that what i'm getting at is the fact that like that person in this situation is you know always here and I was like well if that person's always here shouldn't they be there why are they always here if they you know what I'm saying I'm, not, I'm trying to be you know I'm not trying to give away anything in this video if it gets out but that's what I'm getting at. shouldn't that person be there take care of their business instead of always here that person said to me one day going home I was like such, 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 And I was like, no, I mean, I was thinking that. I didn't say that because it's not my business. And I was like, you know, shouldn't you? So that's not really my fault. Because I, I don't smoke in the house. Of course not. You know, I do it other places. But definitely not in the house. But... Another person, you know, the person that was telling me that, I was like, well, you know, I, I get that, but. Uh, from me realizing that that person got their own business that they should be taking care of instead of such and such and such and such, you know? So, like I said, more, you know, I'm not trying to talk against anybody. This is how, this is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm thinking. This is. You know, what I thought, this is what I still sort of think, even though I'm wrong for not communicating. But, you know, if this ever gets out, like I said, they're more than welcome to throw their opinion. Or not even their opinion, their side of the view. Because their side of the view is fact when they own shit. You know what I'm saying? It may not be universal outside of the house. But like I said, it's fact. It's shit. If I say don't sit on, the, sit on my property, don't sit in my driveway... And you go, well, I have a right to protest. Yeah, you do. But not right there. I don't want you right here. It's my property. You know, do it in the, in the street. The street's public property. You know what I'm saying? That's universal. But that's a law. But what I'm getting at is, like, when it comes to, you know, situations of living and you don't own the house. You know what I'm saying? But I was told some things that, you know, aren't universal outside of the house. You know, but they're universal inside the house. That's what I'm getting, getting at. So I'm wrong. Because, you know, it's universal in, in that house. But I definitely wasn't trying to hold nobody. I, mean, I know I eat my fair share of the mangoes and shit and don't, don't say nothing. You know, mango monster. You know, I'll eat your food and shit, but no roommate has ever said that they've come up with missing money. Except for... You know? Like, ever since I moved out of the house... 
You know, I've only had one roommate steal from me. One roommate. And I haven't taken any money from my roommates. I might eat your food. You not say nothing. I don't mean no harm. I may track a little mud. But I don't mean no harm. I sweep. Put the dishes up. Now, try to keep the bathroom clean. Now, spray bleach onto the toilet every couple of days. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, I don't mean no harm. All right, I'm posting this coming at y'all. I'm going to start coming at y'all with more news, but I'm going to drop this thought and go shower. Got to go get some food later. Yeah. Shave up. Okay. So, I get told I do strange things. Like, I take a shit naked. Not in public. That's perverted and wrong. But, at the house. Because here's the thing, I got a fear. Or when I'm in, like, public, if I have an undershirt on, I'll take the top shirt off. And then just shit in my undershirt. Because here's my fear. Because, like, sometimes I'll be having splatter shits. I'm, you know, you know, I'm not the only person on the planet who has splatter shits. And, you know, you ever look at the back of the toilet and notice that all that shit has, like, hit the top of the toilet or gone into the very back of the edge of the, you know, back rim of the toilet or sitting on top of the rim of the toilet? You'd be like, damn. You know, so my fear is that the shit gets on my shirt. And then I'm walking around with a shitty shirt. You know what I'm saying? You know? So. That's my thoughts. It's 2.05 in the morning. And uh, I'm cleaning out the trunk. Man. I'm going to have to admit it. I feel like Murphy's Law. You know what I'm saying? For those that don't know, what can go wrong will go wrong. But every day, I'm grateful to be alive. Another day to keep going. Look, man, I didn't. I'm not saying I done been through the worst, but I've been through some crazy ass experiences. I tell people what my experiences, nigga. Fuck. And it, my experiences are so strange, or so, or so different, or you know, they're they're, they're consistently, uh, you know, like that fucking happened, you know. So, but got a small story to tell. I don't know who's listening. I got a couple views here and there, but. Underground thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Nancy Pelosi won tonight. I was watching the elections. I didn't vote. Oh no! But I did actually take the time to look up who was actually running. Now I don't remember, but I did actually take the time this time to actually look up and educate myself. I did send the link to somebody too. I don't know if that person voted, but shit. Not gonna get all political, but that's just an update. Whoa.
They're gonna call for. They were talking about are the since the Democrats now hold majority seats, they could win up to 35 seats. Are they gonna start requesting Donald Trump's taxes and shit? I don't know. Does that matter? Does that matter? Does what that nigga make really matter? What's up? Does that really matter? I mean, I guess maybe because I don't know. But that's what they were talking about. They were also talking about will the Democrats look further into was there collusion into the United States election? Now, if there was, I mean, would you really be surprised? Think about that shit. And then on top of that, you know, this dude that used to smoke meth in the bathroom at my job uh, <coughs> told me that there was a book out that he read that Obama's real name ain't even Obama. It was like Jerry or something like that. And he was like a CIA agent. So, I mean, I'm just saying. So, with that being stated, also, I was at work, and this lady, I think she has a crush on me, or she used to, she was trying to get me to buy her and her friend drinks. I mean, I'm trying to learn Spanish. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I communicate and also have another language in my head and new knowledge, you know? So with that being stated, uh, you know, I was doing my job and such and such, and I came back inside and then she was like, well, this person said such and such, and it was really negative. And I was like, you know, I don't care, you know, what you say, because I think she was saying it because, I I, I don't know, maybe she was telling me I do suck at the job, because, you know, I work two jobs, and I get up early in the morning for one job, sleep a little, and come back, you know, but I'm not making excuses, maybe I do suck at the job, but honestly, I get a lot of good jobs, you know. You know what I'm saying? So, I was like, I blew it off because, you know, one, I don't care. Okay, maybe I care a little bit because if I didn't care, I wouldn't be talking about it. But not enough to throw me off my game. You know what I'm saying? Because I get a lot of, that's one negative comment compared to the, semi-decent comments that I get, you know, good job here and there, so, you know, I gotta, I got I think, t- two good jobs today, and one negative comment, so, And I think that's the first negative comment I've heard since I've been there. Now, it's probably more circulating around, but they ain't told me that. I don't know. Can't get critiqued. So, but I guess it bothers me a little bit, but for the most part, whatever. Keep on going. But look for better now. I got situations worked out. Cool. I know I said that was going to be my last thought. But run that shit. Whatever. You know, here's the thing Apple admitted to slowing down on phones, old model phones. But here's the I, 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 it may sound crazy, but I kind of always thought about that too. Because every phone that I have, you know, 
even that doesn't have service, it can still get internet. Now they just don't cut on. Okay, one is like seriously cracked. But the other one I took care of, and uh, you know, it even has a, uh, I think it still even has the, uh, wait a minute, I can go check. Nah, it's too much phone around me in the dark, I don't have no light on. I have no bulb. Anyway. So. With that being stated. I think it still has its screen up. But I took care of that phone. That phone was broken for a minute. It was that 2015 phone. Where. Life changing. Things started happening. Anyway. That phone, I don't think it cuts on either. And that phone always had a, uh, had a case. Right, I had a $1 case. It was like a, I don't know. I remember I had a $1 case. And it was pretty good. Or a pretty cheap cake. Pretty cheap cake. Pretty cheap case. Oh, don't quote me. I'm sorry. Yeah, pretty cheap case. It actually protected my phone. But I know the one that, the 2015, I remember I got the case. That phone doesn't turn off. So, yeah, they slow down older, older model phones. They admit it to it. Planned option. I'm telling you, everything is meant to break over time now. It's not anything new. Everything is meant to break over time because the solution is not profitable. I think the reason why I smoke so much I might be depressed. I don't know. I don't think I'm depressed. I don't feel depressed. I like brushing my teeth. I like the work. Well, I enjoy money in my bank account. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've seen what depression actually looks like. You know, I may be a tad bit messy, but I try to clean my clothes shit out like you know too much trash just pick it up you know try not to be too messy so or maybe I'm just addicted to smoking yeah I guess so I mean people are addicted so you know Oh, yeah, physically. Because, you know, when I don't smoke, I don't, you know, it can't be physically, you know. Mentally, maybe. It's toothpaste. All right. Uh, so here's what I was thinking. You know, the, I was reading psychological, I was watching this thing on YouTube called Bright Side. It was basically telling you, you know, 10 psychological tips that actually work. Like if somebody's staring at you, stare at their shoes. Or if you're having a conversation with somebody, stare at their forehead. I have a tip for you. And I used to do this. Well, no, this was done to me 
multiple times before I realized I could actually do this. So in 2015, I moved to Colorado, or I went to Colorado to for for a set amount of time. And uh, I had met people from like you know different backgrounds, like all kinds of backgrounds. It was very, it was like four white people still there. It's just fucking stupid. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, so. Uh, when I used to have conversations with these people, they used to just walk off on me. I wouldn't even interrupt them. I wouldn't be rude. I was just talking. I would just be talking, and they would just walk off on me. They would just walk off on me, like real talk. Like you'd be in the middle of the conversation, they just you'd be like, and it was done by a lot of people. I even think even some of the uh, some of like the car handlers did it, but it was mostly done by you know you know, the people that I was working with, but yeah, so I've learned to do that, I used to, when I got back from my little adventure, my little three-month adventure, uh, I, I started doing that, people would interrupt my conversations, though, and I would just walk off on them, like real talk, so if somebody's, ha if you're having a conversation with somebody, and you're talking to them, and you, you know, you're engaging in dialogue, or a monologue for the moment in a dialogue situation, and you're talking, and they just jump in, you know, let it happen the first time. You know what I'm saying? But then, you know, you sit and patiently listen. And then after that, you know, you start a conversation. You know, you continue with the conversation. They interrupt you again. Walk off. Just walk off. Be like, they'll, they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm telling you. People will go, oh, I'm sorry, like a motherfucker. I'm, and, then, and then they sit there and listen. And you go, I'm telling you. Walk off. If somebody interrupts your conversation, even if it's in a group of like two or three people, yeah, and, uh, you know, somebody's talking, and even if you don't know any of them, you know, you're just talking, somebody interrupts you. You know, if you don't know those people, you know, and you're trying to make conversation, I guess, try again, and they interrupt you, just walk off. Just walk off. And if they don't notice you, then, you know, you weren't really a part of their conversation anyway. But and it really works. Walk off. Just walk off. You know what? I'm, this has been said before, but uh, I'm going to take it, take it my own version. There's always that one motherfucker that always be like, yeah, I got hoes. I got hoes. I got hoes. But never, never, you, you never see him talking to any girls or you never see him texting any girls or calling any girls and then he, that person be like, yeah, I got hoes. I got hoes. I got hoes. Look, man, I didn't, look, I don't lie about sex. I don't lie about women. If I ain't, shit, I ain't pulling. I ain't pulling right now. But, just say that. Just be like, yeah, I ain't got, I ain't got no hoes. That's what you say. And be like, if you're focusing on life, just be like, yeah, I'm focusing on life. But don't, don't lie. Be like, yeah, I'm focusing on life. Just be like, yeah, I ain't pulling right now. I'm playing video games though. Shit. <laughs> don't even make any excuses. Be like, yeah, I ain't, I ain't got it right now. I ain't got the game right now. Motherfuckers leave you alone. You know what I'm saying? They, they be like, yeah, at least he's honest. You know, because the next motherfucker is lying about. <laughs> man, I didn't see that shit. I didn't. Man, so. But women lie about the niggas that they ain't fucking. Because they don't want to, you know. So. But yeah. Or just admit your feelings in a situation. Like, somebody puts you in a situation. And you be like, and you don't feel comfortable. Just be like, man, I'm fucking scared. The fuck? Nah, I'm not going to do it. Motherfuckers leave you alone. Real talk, you be like, nah, I got, I'm, I'm scared. They be like, oh, okay. Respect. At least you can admit that. Motherfuckers walk off, be like, nah, I wasn't scared. Got a thousand excuses and shit. So, so why didn't you do it? I just didn't feel like it. You just didn't feel like it. And it was something that you really wanted to do. You just had a little bit of fear. It's like, yeah, I got scared. Maybe next time. Shit, I admit my emotions. Don't hold that shit in. Because next thing you know, you're lying to yourself. You know? There's been times I've chickened out one time. I was like, I, I chickened out. And he was like, real tough, man. At least you admit that shit. So, just saying. I know I took down a post from Instagram, but I don't feel that was Instagram ready. Some of these thoughts ain't, you know, I ain't trying to please the public. They're just my thoughts. So, a lot of STDs going on in the world. Shit. In the state of Texas, that's an assault. So, you know, you can lie about who you fucking while you fucking with me. You know, to my girlfriend. You know, it, you know, if you got a fuck buddy, chances are, and you you think you're the only person 
at that person's fucking turns out they're fucking somebody else and therefore you probably shouldn't trust them or even be having sex but <laughs> in general but expect that shit if they just fuck buddy probably expect them to lie or shit tell the truth i don't know people i've had people tell me the truth i've had the women tell me the truth and then some lie but anyway Uh, what's the call? So, you know, if I'm fucking only you, and you my main thing, which I don't cheat because I'm more afraid of consequences. Can't just go fuck everything now. So chances are, I'll be faithful. And even if you do cheat, I ain't gonna cheat because that's just too much work. I got more ethical plans. Uh, What's the call? But yeah, I'm fucking only you. And I wake up one day and I ask you certain questions like, why am I burning you? I don't know. I don't know. Huh? That shit ain't gonna fly. That shit ain't gonna fly. Matter of fact, that's a f- insect fly without his wings. And since I can catch it walking, <laughs> 